Uh, hello there. Uh, I'm Sandy Macmillan, the Academic Liaison Librarian for Social Sciences here at the University of Essex uh, Library. And uh, what I'd like to do is talk to you about how to find data for your assignment or dissertation. Um, and the reason for that really is not because I'm any kind of uh, data expert particularly, but just over the years, uh, many students across the social sciences have asked me for help uh, finding data on lots of different topics. So it's kind of an area that I've developed an interest in and you know, a little bit of knowledge. Uh, it's kind of funny to think that when I started working here, we just had a little booklet that was published in the 1970s uh, and that listed some of the main print series of data uh, in the UK that we held uh, physically in the library. So, of course, since then, there's been a total explosion in the amount of data available to uh, students and researchers. And nearly all of that is available online now, and much of it is open access. So, you know, part of my job is to help students tap into some of those uh, really tremendous sources that are available. Uh, in terms of the, um, uh, the kind of structure of this talk, what I'd like to do really is uh, discuss a few general points about data first, uh, and then uh, look at some of the, the kind of main gateways uh, to, to how we can access data. Um, and then mention or have a look at a few general data sources that are particularly helpful. Uh, and then I'm going to focus in on a particular area, uh, in this case economics and business. Um, so I don't want to go into too much detail really or just list you know, loads and loads of different data resources. The, the idea more is hopefully that this will um, guide you uh, so that you can kind of investigate data sources further yourself. Um, and so just to clarify, you know, my job really is to help find suitable data sources. Uh, what I can't really do is help you with data analysis in terms of, you know, statistics or um, software, uh, because I don't really have the statistical background to do that. So that kind of help is mainly provided by the departments. Um, but I do run a session with Hansa Basundial in Skills for Success, uh, which is on finding online help with data analysis. So that might be a useful kind of complement to this uh, session. Um, so what I'd like to start with is just some generalities really about data. Um, and, you know, starting off, I suppose, with, with why we uh, kind of use data. And, you know, here at Essex, um, in the social sciences, a lot of research is, is really empirically based and um, makes use of either quantitative or qualitative data to address research questions, you know, either from an inductive or a deductive approach. Um, but even if you're not doing a particularly, um, you know, very data focused or data heavy piece of research that involves complicated data analysis, um, you know, you can still use data very effectively in quite a simple way, uh, particularly in visual form through charts, tables, maps, and so on, um, you know, which can convey the point you're trying to make, um, you know, uh, more effectively often than trying to put it into words. Um, the other thing really is to kind of reflect on what sort of research you are doing, um, the nature of your project, and whether data will help you in answering uh, the kind of questions that you're uh, seeking answers to. And, you know, I guess the answer to that is probably yes, or you wouldn't be uh, watching this uh, video now. Uh, but then you need to kind of go on a bit and think about what sort of data really would help in your research. You know, are you, for example, looking for kind of micro level data at the individual or household level, things like surveys, censuses, um, or do you just want, you know, large scale aggregate data for countries uh, using a selection of variables relevant to your topic? And, you know, other things like, do you need a time series of data? the frequency of data, um, these kinds of things. So, 
you know, um, you have to think in kind of practical terms, really, about how available data is. So, you know, as well as obviously doing your literature search as part of your um, research, it's a good idea really to start thinking about data at a reasonably early stage, you know, just to uh, at least reassure yourself that the data you want is going to be available. Um, you know, obviously in a lot of cases projects need to be modified a bit anyway to suit the availability of data, but you don't want to be having to do that at the last minute. Um, and, you know, uh, at the other extreme, of course, you, you might be collecting data yourself through interviews or survey possibly. Um, so, you know, something like that obviously is time consuming. You need to factor that in. Um, you know, it's important to be realistic really about, you know, the time available and the scope of the, the project. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, you know, most data now um, is extracted from online databases or data sets. And, um, you know, generally for large data sets, it's worth looking at the, the documentation, particularly the code book, uh, or the manual uh, that accompany data sets because these will give you a lot of useful information uh, at a basic level you know you can search them to see if the variables you need are present or you know if not there might be a similar one that you could use uh, but they'll also indicate how the data was collected um, and uh, you know, hopefully what limitations uh, there might be to the data. And often there's links to relevant um, studies and publications that have used the data. Uh, so this is all, you know, useful information. Um, yeah, ultimately, a lot of students end up creating, obviously, their own um, composite data set by extracting data for different variables from various sources. And it's fine to do that. Uh, but what you don't want to do, obviously, for one variable is to uh, get that data from, you know, a mix of sources, uh, unless you're absolutely certain that those sources have derived that data for the variable in exactly the same way. Because uh, otherwise that kind of mix and match approach for one variable is going to lead to inconsistencies and render your data analysis uh, invalid. Um, so, you know, data obviously comes with limitations. Uh, gaps, data gaps are pretty normal uh, when looking or collecting data. Um, but they didn't necessarily be that problematic in terms of data analysis. And it's often possible just to, you know, alter uh, what countries, time periods, or the, the mix of variables um, that you've selected uh, to get better data coverage and, and without fundamentally affecting, you know, the premise of your research. Um, so make sure you're aware of any data limitations and, you know, it's important to make reference to those uh, in your uh, research project. I mean, almost all data has limitations, of course, but, you know, particularly more so in some areas, uh, like, you know, if you're researching remittances, for example, then obviously there are likely to be large error margins of error um, because of the difficulty in estimating accurate figures. On, um, on something like remittances. And, and clearly that would be even more the case if you were wanting to compare between countries uh, with regard to remittances. And, you know, bear in mind other things, you know, governments, for example, can put a spin on data. Um, so there's quite a few issues to consider. And if you are comparing across countries, then, you know, if you can find data sets that present data, uh, harmonized data, that attempt to kind of iron out differences into data collecting practices between countries, then, you know, that would be uh, really, really good. Uh, if not, then obviously you need to be aware of that as a, a limitation. Uh, but the basic point, I guess, is there's not much point doing advanced data analysis or trying to draw firm conclusions uh, from results if the data you've used in the first place is, is fundamentally flawed. 
Um, so, I mean, I've mentioned the word databases a lot. Uh, another thing that is useful to think about is, you know, who actually produces databases. Uh, and this is really a very wide spectrum. Um, but you can think of it um, perhaps in, in terms of uh, different layers or strata. So at the top level, you've got the big international agencies like the World Bank, for example. Um, then at national level, uh, you've got you know country statistical agencies like the ONS in the UK, uh, as well as obviously governments, government departments, and government agencies like central banks. Uh, and then below that, you've got a whole raft of um, organizations like universities, for example, research institutes, think tanks and policy organizations, commercial firms, polling agencies, you know, that uh, can all be involved in either producing or hosting uh, data. Uh, and obviously, uh, at the kind of basic level, uh, individuals, people uh, who are sources of data and create data themselves. And, you know, some of these data sets will be open access, uh, many of them now. Uh, others, particularly those produced uh, by commercial companies, of course, uh, will be subscription based. Uh, and that really brings us on to the second uh, part of this talk, which is about finding, uh, how we go about finding sources of data. Um, so, there are various ways you can go about this. Uh, obviously, as a librarian, you might expect me to begin with the uh, library catalog. Uh, and that, you know, still does have a role to play. Um, mainly nowadays, I suppose, for finding uh, older, more historical uh, statistical data uh, and print-based data. But it does also list all of our subscription databases and some of the major open access ones as well. Um, and it's also quite useful for some areas of the world, like Latin America, for example, um, where you know we have specialist holdings and specialist statistical publications. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is just um, share my screen. Uh, so just bear with me a minute, just so we can have a uh, a look at the uh, library catalog. Okay, so hopefully now you can see the library uh, catalog screen uh, and to pull up statistical series or publications in the library catalog, uh, essentially you just need to add the word statistics uh, and then your keywords uh, for the topic that you're interested in. So if I'm looking for labor statistics, for example, uh, for the United States, I can type those in as keywords. Um, make sure you switch over to the catalog tab in your search, and you'll then get uh, quite a long list of results, as you can see, uh, but many of them, uh, most of them quite historical. Uh, while we're on the uh, library website, um, I want to also show you the library subject guides because these um, really are an, a very useful way of uh, uh, getting into the uh, different sources of data that are available to you. So the library subject guides under study and research support on the left hand side here. So you just need to click on those uh, and then you can select the relevant uh, subject guide. Um, they're all kind of laid out in the same basic way. So let me just show you the politics one. Um, so if you're looking for some of the key data resources in politics, then you can uh, just click here on the tab that says data and statistics. And that will just give you a rundown of the main uh, either library databases or open access data sources uh, that might be useful to you. Um, you can also, um, if it's a specific topic or area of the world that you have in mind, you can use the more um, 
detail menu a bit further down. So for example, you were doing, um, I don't know, research on uh, security, conflict, that kind of thing. Um, you can go to that section of the library subject guide and you'll get there, you know, more specific resources, um, not just statistical resources, but many of them are statistical uh, in nature, um, that will give you, uh, you know, sources of reliable data. So um, these are, you know, data sources that appear on your reading list, for example, that lecturers recommend, uh, ones that I've come across uh, in my work or research with students um, that, you know, are, are good to use uh, in academic research. Uh, so the subject guides and the library catalogue um, you know, really useful uh, starting points. Um, you know, as I've mentioned, um, a lot of data now is open access. So uh, other good starting points would be like the major portals to open access data, um, because these these host you know thousands of um, data sets. So um, the kind of sites that I'm thinking of here are ones like Harvard Dataverse, um, based in America or uh, in Germany, the GISIS data search uh, engine. Um, you know, these hold, you know, not just small data sets that academics have produced, but large compilations as well, like, for example, international political economy, um, composite data set on the Harvard Dataverse. Um, and another uh, portal that I like a lot uh, for this kind of thing is Our World in Data. Um, it doesn't kind of host so many data sets. In fact, it doesn't host data sets at all. But what it does is provide uh, a lot of contextual information around different topics and talks about the different data sources, um, their limitations, what they offer. Um, so particularly if you're all kind of starting to explore a topic, um, our world in data uh, is quite a good starting point. Uh, below those kinds of general portals, um, then uh, you have the sort of big international agencies like the ILO, the IMF, UN, and so forth. Um, and um, databases like Global Stat, which is a, an EU-sponsored database that kind of pulls together data from a lot of those general data sources. So, you know, global stat is often quite a good um, uh, starting point for, uh, you know, finding data on a lot of different variables across countries. Um, then, you know, there's regional level organizations, obviously like Eurostat in Europe, uh, regional development banks and so forth. You know, these all offer open access data. National statistical agencies, so I mentioned these before. Um, you know, again, these vary from country to country. Some, some are excellent and they have you know, really extensive data available, others uh, more limited. Um, also at national level, you know, most, a lot of countries now have uh, data archives as well. Um, so, uh, for example, in the United States, the International Consortium for Political and Social Research uh, really is the main organization hosting, I guess, academic social science research. Um, similarly, in the UK, the UK Data Service, um, you know, uh, hosts huge quantities of, of data, and I'll, I'll talk about the data service uh, a bit more later on. Um, and, you know, they're not just data from the UK either, they also host international data sets. Um, so many countries have data archives um, and also, of course, government data portals like gov.uk, for example, uh, for official government data um, in, in the UK. 
Um, so it might be useful now just to have a look at one of those um, those data sets. So uh, I'm just going to uh, again uh, share my screen. So just uh, bear with me for a second. Um, um, so the database I just wanted to show briefly is um, a very popular and, and useful one, the World Development Indicators from uh, the World Bank, um, which is mainly used by economists, I suppose, but it actually has a lot of data generally uh, relevant to social scientists. Uh, and the World Bank itself has man many, many databases. Um, this is probably the the best known one, uh, but it's by no means the only one. But I just wanted to demonstrate it really because it, A, it's quite quick and easy to do in a session like this, uh, and B, because it's, it's kind of similar to the way a lot of databases are structured in that you um, uh, can make your selections uh, in terms of the geographies that you're interested in, uh, the variables or series that you're interested in, uh, and then uh, a time period as well. Um, so let's just have a look at how that works. And really, it's just literally a, a matter of uh, selecting, you know, fairly randomly in this case, a number of countries. So we've got here uh, low and low and middle income countries from South Asia, uh, Middle East, East Asia, Latin America. Uh, so uh, we're going to go with those and then uh, we can select uh, some data series. So I mean there's thousands of uh, variables um, on world development indicators. We'll just uh, make this fairly simple. So uh, I'm going to select uh, military uh, expenditure. And uh, also, I'm going to, uh, and I'm doing a project on a uh, relation between, racial relationship between um, kind of a women's political power and um, policy in terms of, say, you know, defense spending or other areas of public policy. Um, so I'm going to select the proportion of seats held by women in national parliaments. So I've selected a few variables there so I can see if there's any uh, relationship, hopefully, between um, uh, the proportion of women in Parliament and um, <clears throat> and the extent of military expenditure. So you might have a hypothesis, for example, that the more women there are in national parliaments, um, the lower defence spending will be. And spending will be higher on uh, other things like uh, social provision, for example. Uh, and then I'm just going to select, um, say, 20 years worth of data. Um, so we should just be able to download that data as an Excel file uh, fairly easily. Uh, so yeah, here is the data. Uh, so you can see the countries we've selected there, uh, the three variables that we selected, uh, and the columns covering the years that we selected. And yeah, obviously some data gaps, as you would expect, um, for some countries and some years, but generally a fairly uh, comprehensive uh, data set. Um, so, you know, that's just a very quick look at how really quite quickly you can extract data uh, from uh, a data set. Um, obviously, you know, data sets vary. Some are more complicated than others, but in a lot of cases, it's very straightforward. Uh, another fruitful uh, avenue for um, 
uh, looking for potential data sources um, is, is publications, so particularly journal articles. Um, so again, I talked earlier about the literature search and the data side kind of being related. And certainly I think when you're doing a literature search, if you know, if you're doing a data type topic, then you want to keep an eye open as you're doing your literature search to see, you know, where authors, um, you know, got their data from, what data sources they used. And, you know, certainly if I'm having a tricky time trying to find data for a student, uh, what I'll do is do a literature search on that topic on a database a good database like Scopus, for example, um, to see if there are relevant papers in that area uh, that could uh, direct me to, to useful data sources. Um, and another corollary of this is that, you know, authors of papers are increasingly making their data available as replication data sets. This might be on their own website or their institutional website, sometimes on the publisher website or um, in a repository or portal of some sort. Um, so again, you can make use of these replication data sets um, and, you know, modify them obviously for your own research purposes. Uh, and really lastly, I think uh, in terms of starting points for data obviously is, is people, asking people, you know, particularly your know, supervisors, academics in your department who work with data, um, fellow students, librarians, who work with data. Um, you know, there's a massive amount of data knowledge here at Essex, so, uh, you know, make, make good use of that. Okay, so, I mean, so far we've talked a bit about some data general generalities, and then uh, we've looked at some starting points for data, like the subject guides, uh, the main portals, and, um, <clears throat> Uh, general data sources like the World Bank and so forth. Um, what I'd like to do now is just uh, cover some of the main general data sources that we have access to uh, through through the library. Um, so these are the ones I tend to direct students to the most often uh, because they kind of cover a lot of different subject areas, uh, a lot of different countries. So, you know, they're good uh, uh, starting points, really. Um, certainly for anyone looking for kind of uh, more historical or long run time series data, uh, there's a couple of good options. Um, probably the best known is the cross national time series data set. Um, this was actually developed from the uh, print publication, the Statesman's Yearbook, a well-known reference book. Uh, and what it does is offer quite an interesting uh, and eclectic, but fairly ultimately fairly limited selection of social, political, and economic variables um, uh, across all countries. Uh, from about 1815 onwards. So it makes it handy for, you know, long run studies or comparative country studies. Um, another option would be the International Historical Statistics by Brian Mitchell. Again, this uh, started life as a printed book, but it's now an ebook of statistics covering the period 1750 to 2010. Um, uh, tends to be used mainly by economic historians, but you know it does have uh, statistics uh, that go beyond economics, um, and you know uh, both of these are library databases, so uh, you need to access them through the library website. Um, Global Stat, I think I mentioned before, one of those. You know, there's several now kind of multi-purpose open access databases that sort of draw together data from the main agencies, international agencies, and present it in a kind of an easy to use, uh, user-friendly way. Um, so, you know, they're, they're quite good options uh, if you want, don't want to, you know, interrogate uh, a particularly complex data set. 
Uh, and I should also say we, we're going to have access soon to Statista, uh, which is a commercial data provider, uh, but they offer a very wide range of data on a lot of topics that uh, appeal to students, uh, and including areas where you know, up till now it's been quite difficult to get hold of data. So that will be a useful addition to our portfolio. Um, OECD I library uh, also I think is worth a mention because this is a really high quality database um, that gives access not just to uh, all the data from the OECD but actually to all of their publications as well. Um, so, I mean, it's true that uh, a fair amount of OECD data is freely available over the web, but actually if you want access to the, the full range of their data sets, then uh, you do need to use uh, the OECD iLibrary product uh, because that will give you access to OECD uh, iStat. Um, I think there's a misperception that OECD is really just about economics, but actually it covers a lot of um, areas like education, energy, governance, health, migration, science, technology, innovation. Um, so a lot of areas that um, you know social scientists are, are interested in. Uh, obviously the main drawback is you know that the coverage really is is limited to OECD countries so you need to bear that in mind um, and yeah the UK uh, data service um, so let me just show you the UK data service uh, website uh, so I'm just going to share my screen again there we go uh, so the UK Data Service is, you know, the kind of national archive for uh, social science data, essentially. Um, and, you know, it's well worth exploring. Uh, as well as a lot of UK data, it also offers um, uh, macro data. So it has data sets, for example, from uh, UNIDO, uh, the UN Industrial uh, Organization, uh, IMF, um, the International Energy Agency, uh, you know, those data sets you have to pay for normally, so you can get them for free through UKDS. Um, and the good thing about it is, again, it presents the data from those sources through a, a, a harmonized interface. So actually it's much easier to get IMF data through UK data service than trying to extract it from the IMF uh, website itself, which is quite difficult to use. Um, but obviously the main focus really of the UK data services in terms of survey data, uh, so particularly hosting, you know, major UK surveys like Understanding Society based here at University of Essex, uh, but, but many others. Um, so particularly good for um, well, all sorts of things, kind of uh, family, household, um, studies, economics, uh, but also covering social and political um, aspects as well. So, you know, there's things really for a very wide range of research on UK data service. Also includes European surveys as well and some international data. So it's not just uh, UK. Uh, and also huge amounts of qualitative data as well. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a really tremendous uh, data resource and you can really search down to a very detailed uh, level um, through, you know, right down to variable level. So uh, it's a powerful uh, search facility that uh, is offered. Um, so, you know, if you have interests in, um, you know, any of those kinds of types of data, then uh, I'd certainly recommend uh, having a good look at the UK data service. Um, and, you know, they have excellent uh, online help available to help you find and use the, the data that you're uh, looking for. Um, 
I mean, obviously, most survey data is kind of nationally based, but um, sticking to the kind of global level, there are some big portals that offer access to kind of survey and household data. So I'm think, thinking about things like DHS, the Demographic and Health Survey program, um, the International Household Survey Network, which covers developing countries, uh, the World Bank Microdata Library, uh, the IPUMS uh, international data sets, um, and, and obviously national kind of population censuses as well. Um, so, you know, there's a whole um, array of, you know, survey type data available. Um, and this is, you know, particularly useful for researchers looking for that detailed level. And especially if you are wanting to kind of, um, you know, examine, say, cohorts based on age or gender or ethnicity, religion, and so forth, um, because, you know, that's exactly what these types of data sets are designed for. Um, but obviously, there are drawbacks as well with survey type data in terms of, you know, access can be restricted uh, for reasons of confidentiality to some data sets, or it can take time to authorize access. Uh, so again, this is why you need to plan uh, ahead for data uh, fairly early on. Surveys, of course, uh, often by their nature, may be irregular or infrequent. And, you know, sometimes um, with some surveys, you know, the kind of questions aren't always the same. Um, between different surveys. So again, that's another thing to uh, bear in mind. Okay, so um, we've covered uh, sort of what I would think of as some of the main general data sources. Um, the last sort of section really of this talk um, is going to look at a particular topical area and because we ha I haven't got time to cover all the different uh, subject areas that I get asked about data on. Uh, but I want to focus a bit on economics and business, um, partly because uh, we do provide a, <coughs> excuse me, a range of expensive subscription databases. And um, it's important to know these are available and also to know which ones um, are appropriate for, you know, for, for the type of data you're looking for. Um, so, I mean, probably the most uh, comprehensive or most used database we have in this field is ICON uh, and DataStream. Um, so ICON is a, a product essentially from Thomson Reuters, a big financial information company, and was designed really for investment analysis. Um, so it's sort of similar to databases like Bloom. Bloomberg or uh, Capital IQ from Standard & Poor's. So it offers a huge amount of information on financial markets, indices, investments, companies around the world. Um, it's mostly used here by business students, obviously, and financial uh, economists. And uh, I know my colleague, I Gooch, who's the law and business librarian, she uses it uh, a lot with her students. Um, I tend to use more uh, data stream uh, with the economists. Um, so uh, data stream is a is an Excel plugin to Icon, and what it does is uh, aggregate time series data from a huge range of sources, many of which we've been talking about. So international agencies, national statistical agencies, central banks, commercial providers. Um, uh, governments, um, those kinds of things. Um, and the categories it covers are, you know, equities, share prices, equity indices like the FTSE uh, and their constituent companies, company accounts data, a uh, huge range of economic data, you know, trade, commodities, growth, debt, capital flows, investments, all of that kind of stuff. Um, interest and exchange rates, options and futures. Um, 
So, you know, data stream really is the solution for time series data. Uh, icon, uh, more for kind of investment, uh, more current information generally. And Icon also provides access to a wider range of data. So, for example, things like um, uh, environmental, social and governance data, uh, you can get that through, through Icon. Um, obviously, uh, as I'm doing this talk in September 2020, um, access to ICON and data stream at the moment is provided uh, remotely upon request. Uh, let me just uh, again share my screen and just show you uh, how that uh, happens. Uh, okay, um, so uh, on the library webpage, um, if you just go to the FAQs at the bottom of the page, um, the top one, in fact, because, because it's so popular, is how do I access ICON? So just click on that uh, and uh, request access. Uh, it, there are also instructions here about how to uh, access ICON and data stream uh, through your uh, PC remotely. Uh, so you just need to uh, follow those instructions. Okay. Um, but, you know, hopefully as the ground floor of the library reopens in the autumn term, we'll also be able to provide access through the uh, reading rooms to uh, ICON and data stream. Uh, the other main database in this area that we take is Orbis, and that's a, a, a massive and, and well-known global database uh, of company financial accounts data. Um, and unlike DataStream, it includes private companies, uh, so not just listed companies. Uh, the main drawback with Orbis is that uh, data only goes back 10 years. Uh, so if you're looking for a lot of historical data, uh, it won't be uh, available through Orbis. Other databases that are sometimes used, uh, PI Filings Expert, uh, again has global coverage and, and a longer time span back to the 1980s uh, in some cases. Um, the good thing about this database, or it's kind of USP if you like, is it contains the actual original documents that companies file and you know, in particular, the annual reports of companies. Um, so, you know, especially if you're looking for kind of textual uh, information that's in the annual report and not just, you know, the accounts figures, uh, then PI Filings Expert can be very useful. Uh, in terms of banks and bank finances, um, uh, you can get data from, from ICON or DataStream or Orbis, uh, but our main database for this purpose is uh, SNL. Uh, however, uh, we're uh, in the process of changing databases, so from October this year, we're actually going to have the Bureau Van Dyke database bank focus uh, to cover bank finances. Uh, the other main source for financial information really is through uh, Wharton Research Data Services, or WORDS as it's uh, usually abbreviated to. Um, this is essentially a kind of platform through which you can access various, um, well, a few financial databases uh, that the university subscribes to. Uh, so what you need to do here is go to the WORDS website and request an account, uh, and then the library will then approve that um, for, for authorization. Uh, and then you'll have access to uh, a couple of words databases, uh, notably CompuStat and CRISP for uh, sort of company fundamentals and security prices, and an interesting one, Bordex, uh, which offers, uh, it's kind of unique, I think, in offering data on company boards and senior company personnel. So it's mostly used for things like research on corporate governance and executive pay, um, those kinds of areas. Um, 
the other main area really um, where we have databases are sort of covering uh, things like consumer trends, consumer industries, lifestyles. Um, so again, students in the business school, sociology, the Edge Hotel School often use these to explore various um, things. Um, so Mintel, I think, probably is the best known database of this type uh, because it's particularly renowned for its very detailed consumer surveys um, for the UK at least uh, across um, a range of sectors like retail, media, food, leisure, those sorts of areas. Uh, but we have other databases like Passport and EMIS uh, that have much more international coverage. Um, and also cover, particularly EMIS, um, you know, other industries beyond the kind of consumer sector. Um, in terms of economics more sp specifically, uh, you know, economists are very fortunate, I think, in having access to a, a really wide range of open access data set that, you know, supplements uh, data stream really and, and make it really, uh, possible to get high quality data on you know, many topics, aid, development, corruption, trade, labor economics, and so forth, uh, you know, through open access data sets. Um, and, you know, uh, again, I would point you towards the economic subject guide uh, as a starting point. Um, so I'm going to sort of finish up there uh, rather than go on listing um, uh, data sources ad infinitum. Uh, what I think I might do is just share with you, um, you know, some of the subject areas where I um, where I get the data requests, just to give you an idea, really, of uh, uh, where I, 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 and my colleague, I Gooch, the business and law librarian, uh, can help you. Um, in, in getting hold of data. And you can see it's, it's really very wide ranging across, you know, lots of areas of the social sciences. Um, so, you know, the main thing to, to bear in mind is, you know, that there is help available uh, for you in finding data. Um, so uh, mainly split between I and myself. So I, I cover these students in these departments looking for data and uh, I covers uh, the business school and law and you know you can contact us by email to um, uh, put your data inquiries to us um, but don't forget about the subject guides you know they are a, a really a good starting point so you know before you kind of give up and uh, contact us, do, do have a look at the subject guides and see what's available uh, there. Yeah. Okay, um, so um, I think that's about it really. Uh, thanks for listening and, you know, get in touch if you'd like me to send you uh, the accompanying slides or if you need uh, further help with data. Bye-bye.